In this demonstration, we will see how to add, position, and customize G4P controls in your sketch using the GUI Builder tool. We will also see how your sketch can handle GUI events such as clicking on a button or dragging a slider. We start with the blank sketch and launch the GUI Builder tool by selecting it from the Tools menu. At first glance, this might look quite complicated, but you will find it very easy to use. The Controls pane is a tree view of all the controls that have been added to the sketch. At the top of the tree we have the processing sketch itself. Since we haven't added any controls, the only thing that appears in the tree is the main sketch window which all sketches have. The properties pane shows the editable properties of the currently selected control. At the moment, the main window is selected and it shows that the sketch size will be 480 by 320 pixels and use the Java 2D renderer. The largest pane is the form view which is a graphical display showing the position and size of any control added to the sketch. This toolbar is used to add controls to our sketch. There is a button for each type of control. G4P uses colour schemes to give a consistent look to the controls. The default colour scheme is blue. Let's change it to something else. In the controls view, click on the item sketch. And below we can see the properties for the sketch and there's one there for the colour scheme. If we click on the colour scheme we can see we've got eight to choose from and so let's pick the purple scheme. We will start by adding a text area to our sketch. So we go to our toolbars and locate the text area and click. Notice that it appears in the middle of the form view with a red border. The red border shows that it is the currently selected control. The currently selected control will also be highlighted in the controls pane and will appear in the properties pane. We can change the position and size of the control by editing the values in the properties view, but it is easy to do this with the mouse in the forms view. Watch these values change as I move and resize the text area. To resize, I simply drag one of the resize handles. Let's add some other controls. We'll add a button. Let's move that over here. We'll add a text field. And finally, a slider. Controls can be selected from the form view or the controls pane. Either way, the properties pane will always show the currently selected control. A later demonstration will discuss the properties pane in more detail. For now, I will briefly describe those needed for this demonstration. First, let's select the button. And I'll do this in the controls pane here. And notice it has now been selected in the form view and it has been shown in the properties view. So I'm going to scroll up. The first property of interest is the variable name that we used in the source code. GUI Builder generates a unique name for the control but you can change this to something more meaningful if you want to. The next property is the event method. This is the name of the method which will handle any events fired by this control. Again, GUI Builder generates a unique name, but you can change it if you want to. In a real project, I recommend that you rename the controls and event handler methods to reflect what the control does. This makes your source code easy to read and debug. In this simple demo, I will just use the generated values. Here I can change the face text and I can change that to click B. I can make the text bold. The text is centered both horizontally and vertically. So we'll leave it there. Next we'll edit the text control 
and here I'm going to put in some prompt text and it's just simply going to say enter your name this is useful when the control is empty to prompt the user what should go into the field next we've got the slider we've got a lot of properties for slider but I'm going to scroll down I'm going to just change a few of them I'm going to change the number of ticks to 11 okay. I also want to be able to see the ticks I want to show the current value and I want to see the limits of the slider and to give smooth movement of the thumb I'm going to add a little easing to this. I'm going to change the easing to 4. This will give smooth movement if I'm jerky with the mouse. Okay so that's that. Finally we're going to just modify the text area slightly. I'm going to add a vertical scroll bar and auto hide it which means that the scroll bar will only appear once there's more text that can be displayed in the text area. I am also going to change the variable name to TXA events and you will see why soon. Okay so now we're ready to run our sketch so if we click on the PDE and we'll see now that we have two tabs the one called GUI was created by GUI Builder the code in the main sketch tab was generated by the GUI Builder and is just enough to run and test our sketch this code is only generated if the tab had no code to start with if you look at the code you'll see the import statement for the G4P library as well as the required setup and draw methods once setup is called size, it will call the create GUI method, which has all the code to create the GUI we designed in GUI Builder. Next, it calls the custom GUI method. We can use this method to add any functionality that cannot be set in the GUI Builder. The code in the GUI tab is auto generated by GUI Builder every time we move from the GUI Builder window to the PDE. The only code we are interested in is the event handlers, none of the other code must be edited in the PDE. So we have the four event handlers for the text area, the button, the text field and the slider. When GUI Builder first creates the event handlers, it adds a line of code that displays the event details in the console window. We are going to change this code so the event details are added to the text area. The text area control has a method called append text and we will use this instead of println. So if we go to the button here, and I'm going to do TXA events dot append text and cheat to a bit of copying and pasting. The only safe place to put code in this tab is inside the event handlers. Anything outside the event handlers will be destroyed by GUI Builder when it next auto generates the code. Okay, so let's run our sketch. And we can see here we have the text area. If I click here, so we've got button one, G button, so it's added here. Here's the text area, enter your name. And as you can see, there's a, a changed event occurred every time that something changed. Notice now that the vertical scroll bar has appeared. If I slide here, we can see the events changing. And I can see all the events. Okay, so we'll stop that. We'll go back to GUI Builder to show you a couple of other features. The first thing we can do is that when we have a lot of controls sometimes it is difficult to line them up and GUI Builder has some functionality to help you do that. It has a grid so I'm going to show the grid and I'm going to snap to the grid we can see the grids appeared and now if I drag the components 
or resize the components, they now snap to the grid. So we can line them up. We can alter the grid size with this slider. If your computer has a small screen size, it is difficult sometimes to have both GUI Builder and the processing PDE on the display at the same time. So if we select Auto Hide, what will happen is that the GUI Builder will disappear every time we move to the processing PDE. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to move this over the PDE slightly, so to simulate the fact that we haven't got very much uh, space. If I now click on the PDE, the GUI Builder disappears, and to restore it, I press Control Shift F5, and it comes back. That's it for this introductory video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you watch the others in this series.